everybody. So, my Satan blocking shades video was pretty popular. I got a lot of messages of people who loved it, including my adopted niece in Florida, who her mama need to bring her back so I can see her and play with her. She's so weird. She's so cute. Anyways, um, Addison, make sure you wear your shades, girl. Make sure you wear your shades, girl. I know, I know. So, anyways, today I went on and broke out the book of Psalm because personally, Psalm and Proverbs are my two favorite books in the whole entire Bible. For one, they're just more simplified, they're more to the point, they're less extra stuff in there, and I'm not knocking the Bible. Love the Bible, favorite book ever. But sometimes, you want a little simplicity. So, we gonna break out Psalm 13. Number one, and we are gonna go all the way through six. So, I promise this to be quick because, again, Psalms is short, so it's simple. All right, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my heart? How long will my enemies triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God, give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praises, for he has been good to me. Okay. I mean, simple, right? All right, so basically what this verse talks about is how long will you forget me? Well, the thing about praying, and I'm pretty sure this is where this is going, is the thing about praying is sometimes you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray, and you pray for weeks and months and sometimes even years. And you feel like, hello, God, do you hear me? Hello? Are you listening? And then you just kind of feel left out, forgotten. Like, hey, I guess you just don't hear me because I'm not getting my answer. Well, in the Bible, do you know how many times some people had to pray and wait for years? I'm talking like 20 years. Like, can you imagine waiting 20 years for an answer? Like, talk about delayed reaction. Hello? Like, you got, you got this? Like, why can't you not answer me sooner? I know that's how you feel. But God's timing is always on time. I promise. Always on time. So, if you feel like he is just playing games and not listening, doesn't hear you, well then, guess what? You're wrong. He hears you. He loves you. He's listening. But it's in his time. It's not in your time. You don't own nothing. You don't run nothing. You are not the boss in this house when God's in charge. So, that being said, um, sorry y'all, I'm going to Hardee's because I'm super hungry and apparently so is my man, so I gotta take him some breakfast before I go to work. Anyway, so, you might feel like he forgot you. Like, you might. But I promise you, he did it. All right, so we're here waiting on my food. And they're going to look at me like I'm crazy, watch. Because I'm recording to myself. And talking to myself at the window. Should be interesting. Oh, please. All right, so I went to Hardy's. I got my cinnamon raisin biscuit. Because that's the breakfast of champions, duh. All right. So, now, back to where I was saying. So, I gotta hold my phone. Because I don't want y'all to follow me again today. Because, I mean, y'all keep doing that. So, y'all need to be steady. Um, so, God's not hiding from you. He's in his time. And his time is perfect. His time is always on time. So, really, don't worry. If you're waiting, I was told once, if you're having to wait for an answer... You're in good company. Because I mean, everyone has to wait. 
Some people have to wait longer. I mean, personally, I've never heard of anybody waiting longer than people in the Bible for answers. But, hey, I guess it happens. So, anyways, it also says, how long will you hide your face from me? I mean, that kind of goes back to what we were saying. He's not hiding. You might feel like he's hiding, but he's not hiding. He's not. He's there. He hears you. Keep praying. He wants you to be persistent. He wants you to talk to him. Sometimes he may just not answer you because you just don't talk to him unless you want something. And that's a bad habit to be in. Because it's a habit a lot of people get in. Where they need something or they're going through something. So they'll pray for like a week straight. Because they have a crisis going on. Well, that's not the only time you should talk to God. That's not how you build a relationship. I mean, if you had a friendship with somebody and the only time they call you is when they want something, eventually you're going to be like, all right, you're not really my friend. Like, come on. So it's kind of like a friendship. Like in order to build that friendship and trust each other and want to help each other and be there for each other, you have to talk more than just... When you want something like if your friends only call you when they need you then you don't really consider them your friends so i mean it's great that they know they can rely on you that means you're a good person way to go but that's not a friendship that's a you ship i made that up patent and pending putting in the dictionary you ship they're using you so now moving on how long must I wrestle with my thoughts? So, have you ever thought, okay, this is in my head. And it, you don't want it in your head. Because, I mean, it could be negative, it could be bad, it could be scary. Like, there's no telling. Like, I think crazy stuff in my head all the time. Like, if you were in my head, trust me, you would run. Like, you would run far and fast. Really fast. So... Um, the thing is, I think things all the time because I'm pretty sure my anxiety gets the best of me, but it gets the best of me in some of the weirdest ways. Like I will be at a stoplight. Do not judge me for telling y'all this because I've only told like, I think one person this and that was a man, but sometimes I'll be at a stoplight and I just wonder what if I just ran it? What if I just ran it and ran right into the car in front of me just to see what happens? And I'm like, then my insurance goes up and I'm not fully covered. I'm only on liability, which I know is stupid. Please don't yell at me in the comments. But, um, I'm cheap. So, oh well. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But, I just feel like some of the things that I think are just very out there. Like, and then I'll be sitting in my room or I'll be sitting on the couch and I will think the craziest stuff is about to happen. Like, a whole gang of people is going to come barging in my door and, like, tie me up and throw me in the closet and, like, harm my children and, like, take everything I have and set my house on fire. Like, I think the craziest stuff, which is why I don't watch the news. It makes my anxiety worse. So, yeah, that. This woman beside me, she keeps trying to get beside me to see what the heck I'm talking to. So funny. Anyways, so, day after day, have sorrow in my heart. Now, I know what that feels like. Because most of you who watch this are people I know or know me. And you know that a year ago, on Valentine's Day, nonetheless, I got woke up at 3-something in the morning with a call that said my mom passed away. Now, mind you, she was my best friend. Like, have you ever had sorrow like that? Like, your best friend? Like, I talked to her daily. My kids were her best friends. I was her best friend. My sister, of course, was her best friend, too. No shouting at me, Jessica. I totally put you in there. But that was the hardest thing 
I have ever dealt with my whole entire life. I'm still struggling every single day with that. Like I am on this, like trying to survive day by day kick. But also in this verse, which is funny that that's mentioned, but also in this verse, it says, give light to my eyes or I will see or I will sleep in death. And it also says that their foes will rejoice when I fall. Trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praises. He has been good to me. Now that's my favorite part of this verse. Obviously the rest is kind of sad and negative and it's true because sometimes we feel like God's missing. Sometimes we feel like he don't hear us. Sometimes we feel like he's left us, that we've hurt him, and he just will not come back. He's done. He's done with us because we're total screw-ups. I mean, but he created us. He knew we were going to be total screw-ups. So you got to have some comfort in that, I guess. Anyways. So basically where it says that it will re they will rejoice and sing his praises. Well, when my mom passed, although it is the hardest thing I've ever dealt with, my mom knew Jesus. My mom raised me in church. My mom raised me to tithe. My mom raised me to pray. My mom read me, raised me to read the Bible. Like I remember I used to walk in her room when I was a kid and she'd be laying on her bed in her nightgown reading her Bible or clipping coupons. Or at least reading the coupons. Sometimes she would click, clip them. Sometimes I would help her. But anyways, she taught me these things. She taught me how to love God and how to rejoice because she dealt with some stuff too. Like, my mama went through some marriages that were not so great. And I mean like, like five of them. So don't judge her because I will have to hurt you and I don't want to have to do that. But she went through like five marriages that sucked, like really sucked. And so it was hard on her. And she was a single mom for a lot of times by herself, even when she was married, because most of the time she would either have a truck or was on the road or they just really didn't see themselves as our dad. So they kind of just weren't there. Um, but she did it. Like, she rocked the single mom life. Like, she took good care of us. She was always there for us. She made sure she had jobs where she could stay home so that when we got out of school, she was there. When we went to bed, she was there. When we woke up, she was there. Like, she was there. So, that being said, when I lost her, like, that was a reality shock of sorrow for me. Like that was the worst thing I've ever dealt with in my whole life. So when the Bible says rejoice, it's funny because there was a point and still is a point that I rejoice for her because she's in heaven, like streets of gold heaven with Jesus Christ. Like, can you imagine how amazing that life must be? Like, can you imagine how happy she is? She's with both her dads because both of them had passed. P.S. Totally miss you, Grandpa. Daddy B. Grandpa. And so it is crazy to think that people cry for people who knew Jesus and pass away. Because, yes, we miss them physically here, but they're with Jesus. And that is, in a way, selfish of us to cry for them. Like, it's selfish of us to want them here when they can be in a perfect place. So, I know she's with me, and I rejoice all the time because although it's a really hard situation to deal with, I know she's happy, and I know she's with me. So, just keep in mind that when you're going through something really painful and you're going through something where you feel like God's not listening, He is. 
because when I was dealing with that, everyone would pray for peace for me, and I really had it, and I really still do. I mean, it still hurts. I still miss her. I still cry, but I do have this sense of peace because everyone prayed, and it felt like God was not listening to me when I would pray, but I still felt peace. So, my tip to you today is continue to pray no matter how long it takes to get your answer keep praying god is listening he does hear you he is there i promise you he's right beside you right now just chilling arm around you like it's okay we got this like we besties we got this i'm your father remember so he's not leaving you he's not gone there's nothing you can do to make him completely leave you but make sure if you are sinning please repent and try to do better. Like, please try to do better. At least pray for him to help you make you better. So, prayer works. I promise. Eventually, you will get your answer. It may not be the answer you like. You may have already got your answer and you just didn't like it. So, you keep praying, waiting for the answer you like. Well, that's not going to happen. He doesn't change his mind. So, I'm going to work now. Hopefully, it does not pour down raining, although it looks like it's going to. And I kind of work in a garden center, so I kind of walk around like, hello, what do I do besides stand here and get pneumonia? All right, well, I'm out of here because I got to eat my breakfast. Bye!